My people, what up, though? We back with another episode of All Black Men Need Therapy. My name is Chief. And I'm Bell. Prentice couldn't be here today. Brother's on the other side of the country. Yeah, so today is different. We, um, I, we've done interviews before, but I feel like this one's different. This episode is going to be heavy, right? We're going to talk about some things that may be triggering, um, which is the point of, the, of the, the platform, right? To talk about things that, challenges that we deal with in our Shit community. Shit that isn't getting talked about. Shit that's not getting talked about. Post and pre, right? So, and I'll get into that in a second. But um, we got Stevie Javon Clark here. You go by Stevie, Javon, Smooth. Like, what what, what you go by? Thing. Everybody in my family call him Lil Steve. Yeah. Everybody in my, on my, my family do. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, All my cousins, everybody call me Javon. But, like, I don't know. People from school call me Steve. It's a crazy thing. I don't know. So it don't matter? You good? It don't matter. All right. So we got... We got well, thank you for being here, bro. Yeah, for like, sure, you know man. Thank like you, man. Word. Thank you. Appreciate and um, and we're going to get into his, his story in a little bit. But... um. Actually, let's let's get into the let's get into the check in, and then I'll Let me double back on it. Yeah, right, double so back on you, it. You've seen the episode, you know how we get down. So you before know. we get into anything, we just you know just a, a check in, make sure you you know you're doing right, see how you're doing. So go ahead, B, you first, check in. Um, shout out to Mookie in the background. One yeah, time shout for out one to time. Mookie and shout Skittles or some shit back there. <laughs> Mike and um, Mike. Yo, you and him might be the only two people on the planet that still eat Mike and Nikes, man. <laughs> nah, I do. <laughs> so, so you, so you the eyeball. I eat the hot tamale ones, crazy. <laughs> yeah, the people eat Mike and Nikes are sociopaths, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so my check-in today was good, man. Today was a good day. Today I had my first. Um, I did a, a client workshop today, which was yeah, dope. You told me. Yeah. I'm gonna ask you about that. Yeah, I, I, co- I co-facilitated, so my boss was running the show for the most part, but um. You know, it was, a, it was a branding. It would be good for you. It would be good, good for anybody. I could send you the material. It's, um, it's about branding. And um, basically, th- th- if you don't brand yourself, somebody else will brand you. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And yeah. So we, we did that, told some stories. And, uh, and that was good, man. But um, we, got, we got San Diego coming up next week, which is dope. Looking for, forward to getting out to Mira Mesa High School. Shout out to Mira Mesa High Shout School Shout out to Mira Mesa High School, San Diego. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's really it, man. Everything is good, man, you know. No, no complaints, man. No complaints. I'm a, um, I'm gonna take the next one. I know we will pass it over here, but I'm gonna take it now and we'll get, we'll get you on the back end of it all. Um, I'm good. Y'all got a lot of shit going on, bro. Like my next week, I got a week off next week, but I'm on a plane Sunday, on a plane Monday, on a plane Tuesday, on a plane Wednesday. <laughs> like literally every day, I'm flying all over the oh, place. Oh yeah, so, you are, cause you're gonna be you know in South saying? Carolina. Yeah. So, what's it's, what's it's going on? Thing. What are you doing in South Carolina? Officiating the wedding. Oh, that's, uh, right, that's, right, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. I fly back, pick up my baby, taking my baby to uh, UCLA. MJ Yo, so. I'm telling you, that's a dope camp. You've never been there, right? Nah. That's so a my dope daughter, campus, My daughter man. plays softball, and she, like, started watching softball, and she, like, fell in love with UCLA. She's like, Dad, I'm going to UCLA. I'm like, bet. So that's what you want to do. You got to work, whatever. So but we've got this week off. She off. I'm like, you know what? Let me just take her. So she don't know where we going. It's gonna pick her up, pick her up. We out. Go to my packer bag. We're gonna go to Cali and just walk the campus for a little bit, get a little tour. You know what I'm saying? Go to the go to the game, try to mingle her with the with the team and whatnot, and then she's gonna come to the gig with us in San Diego the next day. We're gonna fly back. Um update on the um conversation with my brother. So I ended up I talked to my brother and my sister for like maybe like a half hour the other day. Together? Together. She's in oh, she's in, she's in West Palm with my brother, and um we it 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 was a it was a it was an interesting conversation. My brother basically said he had the same conversation like three years ago. Oh, so he wasn't so in your brother's life I, like I he was really, in your sister's? I don't really know the dynamic of it. You know what I'm saying? I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, so we got to talk. So what I told my sister was I'll pick her up in Atlanta. We'll just drive to West Palm. To West P- Yo. And have that. But that's a great car ride conversation. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, we can talk on a plane, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. Yeah, so I figured it'd be a great way to, you know what I mean, get clear the air and, you know, just that got to be so 10 hours. Just at eight. That's a good drive. Yeah, it's a oh, good drive. Well, you, you talking, yeah, smoking the bandit over right. here. Like but, he, it's a, but it's a, think about it, it's a lifetime of shit I got to get out in eight hours that we got to talk about. So, you know what I'm saying? It'd be, a good, it'd, be a, it'd be a good fulfilling conversation. But word. that was, it was, uh, it was cool. And it, what it, so in that, in that brief conversation, it was really like, they kind of, they had his back. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 but they could see from where I'm coming from. And, he, and, and my brother, you know, he was just like, yo, man, you got to like. They were receptive. Of course. Of okay. course. Well, but it was. Your yeah, sister yeah. wasn't at one point. She. 
has always been receptive. Okay. But I think... She just wanted to get her narrative off, too? I think all she continues to hear is my narrative, and it's like, I don't know the truth. I don't know the whole of it, so she wants to help change that. And it's frustrating because I haven't basically allowed anybody to. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So... Oh, so she's saying you, you're spewing all this, but you're not even willing to listen. Right. Kind of more so. Yeah. That's where I'm taking it. So, but again, we'll have, we'll have that conversation, and it'll help, you know, bring so things what, to the forefront. So is it scheduled, or...? No, no, not scheduled oh, yet, okay, but we're okay, going. Okay. But what, what's crazy is, I'll, I'll show you guys real quick. I mean, I'll, I'll put the picture, I promise you, I'll put it in the, um, in the episode. But my, um, my brother has a 16-year-old son, and I think of my uh, Zion is like 9 or 10. But he showed me a picture of his son. I'm like, I literally saw myself. I showed mm -hmm. you the picture? Yeah, you sent it to the group. This is my nephew, and that's me. That's not wild. Yeah, it's crazy. That's just, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, we look... Very, very similar at the, around the same age. I'm like, yo, that's, that's wow. You know, but, uh, you're crazy now. Right. <laughs> I had hair. <laughs> you dig? But nah, but uh, other than that, man, everything is good. My boys are cool. We just, we just kicked it real quick before I came here. Everything is good, man. Everything, is, everything is real good. So what's good with you, yo? Check in. How you feeling? How you living? What's going yeah, on? I'm good. Taking it easy. Um, what I do today? Got up a little early. Picked up the fellas. No doubt. Got ready for the day. Just... It's been on your spirit? Work. Yeah, I've been ready. Like, I've been ready. Like, nah, for real, no, I'm not, I've been, I've been ready. You see, I didn't make the hoodie and everything before. I had to wear it before. I was like, I went out there. I'd be anxious. That's like when I'd be giving the kids my gifts. Mm -hmm. gift. I don't even wait for their birthdays or Christmas. I'd give like, and take it early. Yeah, yeah. So, so I had the hoodie. Put, I just wore early. Even what you say, like, I'd be anxious. Like, did that, you had a little anxiety today about coming here? Or was you just like, nah, I'm going to show them a kick with the fellas and we're going we gonna to rock out or what? Oh, yeah, like, now nah, I'm ready. What's the feeling like? Like, did you wake up like like is it like is it nerves right now? Or you nah, just, like, text, I text. I was making sure like you no, know, he said it before. Bell be out. We do got to take care. We got to take care. So I'm like, yo, we ready for today? He was like, all right, yeah, we good to go. All right, let's go. All right, well, make sure shit, everything so ready. Good, yeah, so this like, care, I mean, right? this is like it, it must it must be because you 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 are uh, an avid supporter, so it must be different for you being on the other side now, right? Yeah, like nah, listening to watch, us I'll be now. I'll be driving work in the morning. I'll be listening to like this is be bugging. <laughs> Yeah. I, you know, I, <laughs> it's, it's mostly his bullshit we be having to deal hey, with. Man, uh, what I'm the shots be crazy. I mean, <laughs> what I was, I was funny because I was telling him the other day, I'm like, yo, it's so crazy how like we'll have a topic design and we'll be talking about what we'll be talking about. We'll go completely off script real quick and then jump right back into the shit mm -hmm. like nothing ever happened. You know what I'm saying? But that's, that's a good thing, though. You know Thank what I mean? Yeah. So I'm going to jump into it. So you, a lot of our, our listeners may be wondering, we don't really don't do a lot of interviews at all, but this um, interview you'll find is... <laughs> deeply rooted in mental health, deeply rooted in a lot of systemic things. And we're going to get into it. So as I said, we got Javon here today. And um, so it's, it's crazy, Javon. So when we was preparing for this interview, right, we obviously know the story. The world's about to hear the story in a minute. But we don't know the story, right? Like I was telling Chief just this morning as we were preparing, and um, I'm like, yo, I remember like hearing, I remember it vividly. Like I remember what happened, at least what was told to me that happened. And then I'm like, Chief, do you remember? He was like, vaguely. So I called my sister, because my sister's seven years older than me. Because when he said he couldn't really remember, you know, I, you know, I don't remember shit. Anymore. Yeah, but I was just like, why do I remember this so well? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm trying to think to myself, I'm like, why do I remember this so well? So I called my sister, thinking that maybe, because she was living in the house. She was still living with us at that time. So I was thinking maybe there may have been some affiliation or something that, which is why it was so prominent in my mind. You know what I'm saying? But she was like, nah, I don't. She's like, I remember. She remembered it probably like you remembered it. But she was like, no, nah, I don't know anybody who was involved. So I'm like, all right. So maybe I just, it was a, a, during the time. But that was a, a crazy time for the city in general. Like them, yeah. them, them years, yeah. man. It was a crazy time. It was, it and it felt wild. like stuff was happening like every week, every month. And um, so anyway, so we got Javon here and um, his, his name is like, he's like a New Britain. So we from New Britain, Connecticut, just so you guys don't know, for those who, who've been listening for a while, we've mentioned it a number of times, but just for overall perspective, New Britain is a very small city. It's a city, but it's a small city. And um, I like when I tell people about my upbringing, I always tell, I always give the disclaimer. I talk about how the 90s was rough and stuff like that. But I always said, like, we not, that's not the south side of Chicago. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not the south side of Chicago. We got our own challenges. There was shit that we had to deal with and get through and come out of. But I say all that to say, during this time, 
when um, everything happened, it was like the talk. You know what I'm saying? It was like everybody was talking about it. And, um, but I wasn't close enough to the situation to know exactly what happened. Like I know what I read at the time and I know what was, people were saying. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to read an article from back then to give the people some context. And then we're going to start from the beginning. All right. Um, or did you want to read it? I can read it. Don't yeah. Since you don't like the way I read, cool it, apparently. That? Go ahead. All right. You good, Let's make it sure. That's a newspaper article. This was the newspaper yeah, article from, from back. Have you ever I'm read? Pretty it? Sure I, I'm pretty sure I read a few of them. Yeah. Okay. I, I think I read like two of them. I think there wasn't too many. All right. So headline: Big bold letters on the front of the newspaper. Man gets 30 years for for 1996 killing. Published on July 25th, 1998. Article reads, the sentencing of New Britain man in Hartford Superior Court Friday to 30 years in prison could have been just another case of one drug dealer being sent to prison for killing another. But instead, for an hour, members of both families pleaded for the court, pleaded to the, before the court, some for justice, others for compassion for the son who was killed and the other who would be lost to prison. Stevie Clark, 20, faced five to 40 years in prison for his conviction early this year of first degree manslaughter with a firearm in the 1996 shooting of John Bazemore, 32, at the Mount Pleasant Housing Projects in New Britain. I used to live there. Um, Bazemore cousin, Bazemore's cousin, Ernest Garlington, said he counsels boys who, like himself, grew up in poverty, immersed in drugs, guns, and deadly vengeance. Giving Clark a lenient sentence would only send back to the community a message that Garlington has tried so hard to counteract. Clark, a, le- a young, slim man often picked on, turned to drugs as a career choice, prosecutors said. The evening of August 2nd, 1996, he accused Bazemore of holding back sales money owed him. Bazemore bullied and taunted him. Clark was originally charged with murder. He told the jury that Bazemore's threats had frightened him. In self-defense, he ran to retrieve a gun and fired at Bazemore. The jury concluded that the killing was neither murder nor self-defense. John, Judge John F. Mulcahy Jr. said, was he was, not, he was not unmoved by Clark's youth or the effect of growing up fatherless and poor. But, he said, Clark could have walked away from the dispute instead of coming back and shooting Bazemore three times at a distance of four feet. Drugs and guns are a deadly combination, he said. You had a young man with a loaded gun engaged in drug activities in a senseless, stupid argument. The inevitable conclusion was premature death. When it was Clark's turn to speak, his words were mixed in sobs. I tried to get your address and write you a letter, he said. I'm very sorry. I accept that I should be punished. I know I did wrong. I was scared. That's the template from the article back then. I know oftentimes the media will embellish a story, drag some shit out, say stuff that ain't true. So, I mean, feel free to elaborate on what we read or give give us your version. Well, no, before we even go there, let's let's back up. Right, like I want to okay. back up. Yeah, yeah let's 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 back up yeah. because we all know, like everybody in this room knows what happened. Um, the people who are from this community who are listening, they know they heard the story. But that's the that's the headline, right? But like, what's the story behind it? So what I want to do, and just for some context for our listeners, so so Javon's first cousin is is my best friend, our best friend, growing up. Um, so I've always been familiar. Shout and, out to us. Yeah, shout out to us. Um, and J- Javon and I have had a relationship pretty much ever since he came home for the most part. But um, what I want to I I back up, you know what I'm saying? Like, so let's start from the beginning. So w- were you born here in New Britain? Yeah, I was born in New Britain. I was born, um, my family from Pinnacle. Okay. Right. Pinnacle right. another housing Originally, projects around the way. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Family's Pinnacle, baby. So how, how was it growing up? Because um, cause y- your dad was murdered. You know yep. what I'm saying? So how was that growing up? What, Cause how old were you? Two. I was about to turn two. When my pops passed. Wow. So 1980. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be 46 in a couple of weeks, a couple of months. Excuse me. So. So so what was it like? Cause you was in um, Pinnacle. Or you was when when my pops passed. No, when you when you when you were growing up. Oh. Um. Growing up, the, the most of as far as remembering, I went. I lived in Willow. I was okay. younger. I lived in Willow There's first. Another, uh, I was going to Smalley school. Yeah. I was at my elementary was Smalley. I lived in Willow for a minute. Um, I was like 10, 11 when I left there. We moved to Hartford. My mom was my sister. Okay. So um, we moved around. We moved around a little bit. I moved around a little bit. Like within, the, within like five years, we probably 
like four different spots. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, my mom's me and my sister, so it's doing what we got to do. And you moved back to New Britain? Moved when? back to New Britain in 92. I was okay. living in the, um, we moved to the Ville in Hartford. Okay. So I, like, I started getting a little taste of running around and I said, I'm not going to school. I ain't doing this, so. So it sounded like trouble. Much. Started getting in trouble. Like mom, like no, we gotta go back to New Britain. For so that. just for, the, for those that don't, aren't, aren't aware, Stowe Village was one way in, one way out uh, back in the day. My cousins lived out there. Um, get into that later. But anyway, but I'm listening to you tell your story, and it, it, you literally moved from hood to hood to hood. The hood yeah. just got worse. The, the hood got yeah, worse was, every every step you went. Yeah, we moved around. Like I said, New Britain for a minute. Then Hartford. We was at we was at a couple shelters for a minute. Then we went to the Ville, got in trouble. Mom sent me to Britain with my grandmother on the east side. So then she moved to New Britain. Then I moved to Pinnacle. Pinnacle Projects. to Mount Pleasant. Projects. Pleasant <laughs> DLC. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so with all that, right? So you, you've named some infamous, in Connecticut at least, some infamous housing projects. So what was that like? What was the first time you, from you remembering like you witnessing violence? Um, I'm trying to think what projects all like. Not for nothing, it wasn't even a lot, yo. It wasn't even a lot, Ron. It was just like, I don't know, I think regular fights when you're in the projects and, but it wasn't like, it wasn't around for a lot of, a lot of shooting and stuff like that and acting mm -hmm. up in the days, like, you know, I don't know. You know what's crazy, though? I'm just saying, like, we all grew up in, under the same circumstances, but he's like, oh, no, just regular fights. Nigga, that's violence. Like, it is, but it's just... Just because where we're from, it's like, it's, yeah, it's so we're accustomed to this shit, so we see it all the time, and it's not like, yo, like, Watching cats fight is not okay. At nah, nah, I get it. Five. Nah, I know that. You know what I'm saying? They... Seven. Like, yeah, nah. But that's just, so you don't think that had any, if, you, you, if looking back at it right now, can you be like, damn, like I did watch a bunch of fights growing up and like that. Yeah, nah, that... I did. Because I just figure you around people, like now that I look at it, all these just, people around enough, each other long enough, they get tired of this shit. When they fight. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's just like, you just cool. You just argue for sports all day. Like, you know, this might be two dupe friends that just drink too much to can that they fight and like, they don't remember nothing for the next day. That shit. Mm. <laughs> so, that's true. But the way it just seems completely normal. Yeah, nah, it's if you normalized, do normalize, like, yeah, it's something just... different, like, you know. So when you was moving around, you know, you said you got in some trouble, right? Yeah. Like, what ha like, how did you, no, before, sure. before you got to Kinetic, uh, to New Britain, um, how did you find yourself in trouble? Did you like aspire to do anything in school? Was like sports or anything? Like how did you find yourself in trouble? I started getting in trouble in Hartford. Probably when I, when I moved to Hartford and then I moved back to Britain. Britain it got worse. But when I was in Hartford and I lived in the Vale, it was just I was there for a few years and then you know, a couple fights in school and I was went to Freddie Wish. Um, but I don't know, it started I think it started with stealing, stealing, stealing shit out of Kmart in Windsor. Mm. Stealing BB guns and slingshots that come with your arms. And mm -hmm. next really thing you know, wrist rockets. Around, yeah, rockets. next thing you know, I'm rocket. running around shooting windows out of shit and I'm just bored and just not doing nothing. Shooting birds out of the trees, just, I don't know, just A lot of idle time. Huh? Yeah, yeah, a lot of idle time. They said, you know, devil's a playground. Devil's mm -hmm. playground, idle time. So. Mm hmm Get you young when you ain't got nothing to do. Like, all right, just tear something up. Nah, yeah. <laughs> but it's so, it's, that's so, I'm just about to say, that's so crazy as to like how we grow up and it's like when we don't got nothing to do, we go out to look for some shit to get into. Rather get than in going trouble, and just yeah. Play yeah. With our friend. We, like, the, just the culture of where we're from says we should be doing some. Or we, I don't know if it says just that. Just that thrill, like, that mysterious yeah, I mean, shit. Even like, if it's the, as simple as like nigga knock, we used to call it, like knock, knock, zoom, they call it name. Like little shit like that, like just, that you could potentially get in trouble for. You know what I'm saying? We just found a way to. Get into some shit that wasn't. Mm -hmm. I was telling this lady that I worked for her brother. Um, we just sit there and stop at stop signs in the wintertime and get on the back of a bus and just let it drag you Hold four or five to... down blocks down the street in the snow, yep. just dragging. Yep. <laughs> yeah. We, mm, well, why, why did we find fun in some of the dangerous, the most dangerous, most dangerous shit, shit ever? You could do, right? Um, so, no. so did you have, um, I know obviously your, your, your father was murdered at a young age, but what? Were you, um, did you have any male role models growing up? Crazy thing, but I knew, gonna say, I knew this was going to come up, that one. I was like, it's super. My uncle, my uncle, I think my uncle, I looked at it, I was thinking about this question earlier. I was like, dang, I said, who I actually had somebody that was kind of solid around me for mm -hmm. a minute? I think my uncle, my uncle Angie. Okay. Uncle Angel. I think that's like the most stable person. I used to 
take me fishing. He That's what's up. Teach me as far as this. Is your mom's brother? Yeah. My okay. Mom's brother. Um, he works. He's work at a computer company. He used to take me there on the weekends when I go to his house. So he didn't mess with the computer. So it's like a lot of stuff I picked up from him. Right? Nah, it's um Angel and um Daniel's father. Bertos, Beatles, uh, BJ's brother. Yeah. Right. Yeah. My uncle, he's like he's uh he got some position at a church. He does a church thing. So how was that? So he 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 lived in New Britain. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. Nah, they've been New Britain their whole life. Like, they went from Jerome, from, you know, same street, yeah. basically on Jerome, yeah. right down to Slater, so. Okay. So how was yeah. that? Like, did you, was he was he trying to step in for the void that was missing, or was they just trying to just um, keep you out of trouble? No, I don't think it was to keep me out of trouble, because when I used to be around him all the time, I was just, for the weekend, I ain't, you know, my aunt, my aunt and my uncle come over, they like, you want to come over and. You know, just take care of me, stuff like that. Give my mom a break, I guess. So, like, mm -hmm. second parents and stuff. So, now, nah, it was just, he the one got me into everything. All his sports teams, I just went against everything he liked. And then that's how I got my team. He a Knicks fan. I'm a Celtics. Ah. He a Jets. I like the Giants. <laughs> so, like, you know, I got something to compete against. So, whenever they do compete, if shit, I'm looking for, like, I might get able to get something out of it. I'm willing to bet something. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about getting something out of it. That's so now it's good. Funny because uh, my uncle got me, you know, the competitiveness of, oh, he got a team, I got a team, and I look forward to coming the weekend with him. So, now nah, he did a lot. He did a lot. That's what's up. Now, with sports, you play any sports growing up, anything like that? Briefly. Mm. Briefly. I don't know. I think just a lot of people, um, I think I was probably on the go so much, so I, like, I didn't really prepare to sit there and, like, do too much shit with people when go to rec centers. And I played football um, for, like, a year. Hartford high school ball EC for a year. Mm -hmm. I like I said, I, I felt like I was gonna be going somewhere so soon, so moving around, like I ain't really take no too much interest and in dedication and staying. So you got accustomed to just like not really being settled anywhere. Yeah, not just being stable. Like ready, yeah. yeah. No, I know we good though, and we you know it's just how long we gonna sit the way we gonna sit. Right. So right now, how how long? What was the longest place you had lived? Um, I don't know. It's been probably spread out. Like my my pleasant part was like two years. Pinnacle, and Pinnacle might be the most part because I know I went to Slade for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. there, then I went to you know, East New Brown High. So I think Pinnacle was right there the most probably for like f three, four years. Wow. But that's it. You know, the next I went to jail right when I turned eighteen. So. Right. Right. So. so in the article, it talks about um, basically just two drug dealers having having a issue, right? Yeah. So, when did you get introduced to hustling, or um, hustling in any capacity, not necessarily drugs? It's like when did you get introduced to that? Um, you remember how old you were? Hustling, as far as trying to make some money, with um, was I got it when I started doing it. I was staying with my grandmother on the east side. I used to just wait at the bus stop, just coming to farms across the street, going to just steal all the gum, everything, the big packs of juice mm -hmm. from steal all this shit, like boxes, and go right to school. That was the move. Right to, uh, <laughs> Kata and them used to do that too. They used to uh, steal the, uh, the strip of gums and, and sell them for a dollar in Pulaski. They, they, had, to, they had the school that sold and, up. <laughs> that and... Um, you know, the newspapers used to get like 12 CDs, I think like 12 CDs for like 10, like $5 and yeah. shit like that. You fill it out. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. And like, no, I don't know how, whatever it is. I fill my grandmother's name, Can't my aunt's man. name. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I used to send them shit in the mail. I get 10 CDs and this is my grandmother's name, my aunt's name. I was getting a bunch of CDs and I was like, shit, it's working. And eventually it stopped. I get like, I just started going to sell, sell CDs. <laughs> so you've been hustling for a while. Yeah. Figure out something. Figure like, out you know, trying to get how to yeah. get by. So then what? So, so you went from the still in the candy store <laughs> like we all did, going to. I love that CD hustle though, because that's like outside the box. You yeah. know what I mean? And like, they're not going to charge. Read, them, you got to read something. They get like something. a bill for like five dollars. I see it to see the mail, the bill come in. I'm like, all right. I used to rip the mail up. <laughs> Seven dollars. They ain't gonna worry about that. Right. They ain't gonna come looking for me for that. Yeah. So then, when did you graduate? Like, when did you realize either? This isn't fast enough. This isn't enough. Or I don't know. I just I don't know. It never was nothing. It was just I don't know. Being with my mother and my sister, I was like, you know, it's selling hustling. Tawana's older than you. Yeah, two years older. Okay. Than me. It was never a point to where it's like 
I was I felt like I was fucked up. I needed anything, so I was like, um, I know I was good. I was shit. My mom fed us. We had clothes. You know what I'm saying so. I ain't really really like street life. Nothing grasped me to where I was like, I want this. I want this. I need some money. I need. I take it for whatever come. I'm also, I'm used to outside playing with nothing. So mm. did you feel pressure to like? quote, unquote, be like the man of the house? Did you have that pressure on you or was mom just holding it down and you was just chilling, being a kid? Um, no, I wasn't no pressure. I just felt like the time we had to, you know, me and my sister take care of us, you know, we had to take care of ourselves, we do what we got to do. Mom, I guess she had it. You know, and now that I look back at it, I'm like, you no, know, my mother's young. She lost my father. Um, shit, she's struggling herself. But at the end of the day, I'm like, we good. So I'm like, I look back at it. My shit, I wasn't. Wasn't fucked up as far as that. Like, wasn't going hungry. Wasn't getting beat on. I seen like you no know, from other people's parents and you know their upbringing. No, I'm I'm I'm, I'm okay. And that's and that's crazy because anyone listening who doesn't come from where we come from would be like, damn, he had it rough when he was growing up. His mom, his dad, his died. Was dope, his yeah. mom was you know blah 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 blah. It's like this shit is so normalized for us. It's like yeah, you know, it's, it's just what we do around the way. Yeah, I guess you just figure you just I don't know. Sometimes I guess. I don't know, if it's in your DNA, you just figure like, all right, this is the day you're going to come. I got to take care of today, and you know, we work through, you know, work through I, what we got to do. How old was your dad when he passed? Uh, passed, I think he was 19, about the, maybe 18 or 19. He was about 61, died at 80, 19. Yeah, so you, so you had teen parents as well. Yeah. And, and you the second, so that, that means, yeah, yeah okay. So, so your yeah. mom was um, a young teen my mom, mom. I think my mom had my sister probably like at, when she was like 17, I think. Mm-hmm. All right, so you hustling, you getting a couple dollars. Bring us, bring us to that night. So walk, walk us through, like whatever you feel comfortable. And again, like um, just a disclaimer for everybody, like we're not condoning violence. Nah, However, there's a component me. of um, trauma that that we one that we we are um, born into and make decisions based on that. And now we are forced to deal with it. You know what I'm saying? And how we yeah. all deal with it is how we deal with it. But it's it's good to to deal with it in whatever in whatever manner you feel fit. So bring us to that night, right? So you, you what, 17, 18? Um, 18. 18. I just turned 18. This so you, you, you no longer going to high school, still going to high school? I just, I just stopped probably like maybe like a year or two ago. So you dropped two out ago, yeah. and you just in the street for the most part. Yeah. Just, I, what is I applied for Job Corps. Mm. Then they shot me down. Once they shot me down, I was like, I'm like fuck it. I ain't care. Until just now, I didn't know people got shot down for Job Corps. I thought yeah. everybody who applied yeah. to Job Corps got yeah, in. No. Yeah, now they shot me down. I didn't know that. Okay. So it was like, you know, but I, right before that, I applied for night school. Like, I'm about to start. I got to start doing something. Because I lived with my aunt for a minute. Mm. Then that didn't work. Like, her structure was, I look back, it was like, you know, it was how it was supposed to have been. But I was like, man, I'm still old. I'm still, you know, I'm going to run around a little bit, so... Like, nah, you can't go out for the weekend, and I'm straight, I'm going to go outside. Well, you mm-hmm. got to leave. No problem. Got to go get a vehicle, get my shit, I'm out. Mm-hmm. But um, now that night- So when you, when you, you, who were you living with at the time? My mom. Okay. I just okay, moved okay. back, I just moved back with my mom probably like, maybe, maybe like six months before that. Probably. Okay, okay, okay. And this is in Mount Pleasant? Yeah. Right. Because I was living in West Hartford with my aunt. Gotcha. Okay. So, my moving. Um... I don't know, I was just out there just, I just hustled just because, honestly, not because I ever feel like I need anything. Because anytime I feel like I need a couple of dollars, anything, I just ask my mother, mm-hmm. give me $50. I don't really need too much, like I said, so I didn't care about the clothes and certain things that people, like, are right, they like, this is, you know, they feel something good about. I didn't really care about it. Um, so I was just out there hustling, and you know, I know dude, I know John. Somebody came through, drive down the projects. You want something? I just, I said, I didn't care about it. So I just give him a bag, do what you gotta do. Come back. It's short. We start going back and forth for a little bit. I'm like, yo. So was you working for him? Nah. Okay. I just, nah. I just like, people like run customers, they run sales for you. you okay. So it's just not, it's not like just, you just do it for me. It's just like some people be out there and they know certain people. So it's like, yo, you take care of it. You middleman it real fast. And okay. No, not necessarily like, it's just anybody do it. It's not necessarily just somebody that uses drugs or whatever stuff. So, um, I don't know. I guess a lot of people know me for just like not caring. Like, you know me, I'm not too long. Like, right. you know, it is what it is. Like, I, whatever the case, the case, the situation is, if ain't nobody putting their hands on me and not ain't no life changing, I really don't care about it. 
But um, comes back. My it's short. It's you know ridiculously short. Mm. So I'm like, yo, either you got money or you got the rest. He's like, what's good? So he's like, oh, hey, this is what I gave him. All right, you know, whatever. I don't care. Keep it. Now, you, oh, you think, I be, you think I'm still in this shit? Whatever. I think I'm going to beat you. Yeah. <laughs> like, what you, like, you ain't giving nobody this much for whatever, what, what you giving me in my hand. Right. So I was like, nah, whatever. You know, I don't care. So now you're getting mad at me because I'm not arguing about you know you stole, you, mm. you, you shortchanged me. So it comes to the point where um, we're arguing. He walks up towards me. So um, I stand up, he push me. So I'm like, I, pull my, I got a gun on my waist. I pull my gun out. Don't put your hands on me again. I didn't point at him or nothing. I was like, don't put your hands on me ever again. Like, I don't know what's, what you thinking right now. Don't do it again. So I sit down. I'm talking to somebody that's there also. That's in there. Um, I'm like, listen, he put his hands in me. That's when, I, that's when my pops, I'm, I'm going to shoot him. So it's like, that's just my mind still. Like, I'm not, I don't put my hands on nobody. Don't put your hands right. on me. I mean, it is what it is. I don't like, no. It, it, it comes from different shit, but um, he's still arguing. Oh, you can pull a gun out on me? Whatever. I'm not at all. I didn't point at you. I'm just letting you know. Don't put your hands on me. Bottom line, I said, ain't, ain't nothing else to it. Whatever you got, keep. You got my money, you got, you know, you got the work, keep it. I don't care. Talking crazy. Like I said, just I'm, I'm laid back, quiet. Oh, you're going you're gonna to have to use that. I'll take it from you. Bef- no, I'll take it from you. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're not taking this. So he walks up towards me again. I stand up. And I let him get close enough to where it's like, hopefully not going to do anything. He right. grabbed by my neck and pushed me back again. That's why I just pulled a gun out and shot him. Mm. So like... The newspaper article, and he's like, oh, he laughed and came back and stuff like that. They, I ain't going nowhere. That's what I was saying. They, yeah, nah, they, they definitely they, tweak they a little that bit. Shit how they want nah, they, they, they definitely tweak it, but like for the most part, it's like, you know, it, 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 it kind of it, it is what it is, but I ain't leave nowhere. That's why I told him, I said, I know, that ain't going nowhere. Because if I'd have left somewhere, they ain't that serious. I'm not going to leave somewhere and come back. <laughs> Just, I ain't no troublemaker. I ain't no, that. Change the shit, but you know, take a little a moment to make it like the nigga from, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, what was the fuck, the Wesley Snipes movie? White man can't jump and go to my car. Oh. Like that's what, like that's what I heard. Around, yeah. That's what I saw when I read the thing. Like, go to my car, get my gun, come back and kill everybody. Mm-hmm. Man. You know what I'm saying? But so that's yeah. But the, the media will paint it how they want to paint it. So it's good. To yeah, they never that serious. Yeah. Okay. So that's why it was. That's where the self defense thing came from. Yeah, that's that's my thing. Is that you just putting your hands on that? He wasn't picking on me and stuff like that. Not, but it just you know people just talk shit when they you know they feel somebody laid back. It's still to this day. Mm-hmm. I don't get it, people you know, running mouth like, ah, whatever, I'm good. So, so this is what I remember, right? And you, I, I need you to, <laughs> I need you to, 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 to tell me if this is true or not, because I want to, I want to get to like what your mindset was after the fact, all of that. But the story that I remember, oh, the, not again, oh, not when I got caught, huh? Or when I got caught. That <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm gonna get to that. I'm gonna get to that. <laughs> But what everybody was saying, and again, I'm, I'm young, so, because did it happen in 95 or 96? 96. 96. So 96, I was 14. So I, the story that got to me was he was, like, robbing you, you know what I'm saying? Like, chumping you, like, taking your shit, stuff like that, and you basically stood up for yourself. Like, that was the story. And then everybody was like, they caught him in a tree, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, he was hiding in the tree, and I'm like... How he getting a tree? <laughs> yeah, nah, nah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know the crazy shit with that was? Like, no, it's a spur of the moment. I ain't into no shit like that. Just, no. So I'm, when we live, I, I did what I did, and I ran down a couple rows. Like, I live on the second, third row. So mm-hmm. I ran down, and I ran home. Like, my mother was there. My mother was pregnant with my, my, youngest, my youngest sister and uh, her husband. So I go in there. I tell her what happened real quick. Somebody follow behind me, talk real quick. I take off. So as I'm leaving, because I'm, I'm not for I'm just feel like I'm going to run. I don't know where I'm going to go no at the plan. moment. Yeah. And not at the moment. I just know I can't stay in my house. So um, I take off. Like, when I'm leaving up, I know, like, all right, I got an idea where I can go. So as I'm running up, it just so happened, you know, beat cops back in the day, they just patrol. Mm-hmm. Like, two vehicles come down, so I'm like, I panic, so I circle back. And within that time, you know, this is like probably like three, four minutes. They around anyway. They coming what close. What time is it? 
it's like 11 at night. Okay. So, like, no, they're around, and this is mid 90s. So, they just around because everybody out doing whatever they're supposed to, not supposed to do. Right. So, you no, know, it was like a little panic. So, I doubled back and I came back and I was like, dang. So, like, you know what? I'm just sit up in here. I was like, there's a tree right in the middle of the, you, you the think, hill. You think there's any irony to the sirens in the background right now? <laughs> yeah. I'm, 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 I'm too funny, but we're dead serious. Like, it's just, yeah. it's, 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 the irony, it's crazy, right? The irony of having this conversation. Yeah, it's like me going. trying to get in. I come back and I double back and yes. just right there, the sounds. Right. Mm-hmm. But no, nah, that's what it was. I just doubled back and it was there. I was like, I was like, fuck it. Let me see if I get away doing this shit. I go up and I'm sitting in the tree. Now I'm watching it. The police came down there immediately. Mm-hmm. So I'm watching everything. They run into my, my apartment. They run into my mom's house and everything. They sitting on the end of the thing. I'm just sitting there the whole time, probably for like 15 minutes. 15 mm-hmm. minutes. I'm just watching them. They got, they're sitting there seeing if I come out the back door, the front, or when, after they leave. So... Now, even with the newspaper tell you how I got caught, they say a dog found me, whatever. Like, this is it's crazy because they're sitting there literally underneath me. I'm sitting here up on the tree like this. I'm sitting there listening to them so that he left. He left. He's not, he's not around here. And I guess you just know when you get that feeling somebody might be watching you. Mm. I'm sitting there looking. I'm like this. I'm in the, I'm, I'm in the all black already. And I just got, I got um, my pennies on, the, the old one, 96. Mm-hmm. So the guy reflector. looks up. Yep. And so you got the reflector. Yeah. He looks up. He looks up. No, that's the only thing you see. You see the bottom of my sneakers to the side. Put the flashlight up. Get down. Get down. That's it. It's a wrap. Now, do you, like, you You obviously gave us an, an, an account of detailed story. Do you remember this shit like yesterday? Like every yeah. detail? Like, yeah. Because it's like, it, I, don't, I don't look at it as like nothing bad. And it's like, no. Kind of, I do. I, I can't say. It depends on which, what, what angle I'm looking at from. But it's just, it's just a chapter. No. Some people go through different shit. Some people go through different, you know, medical issues. So I just happened to go through DLC. So when that happened, you in the tree, they get you, they find you. At what point do you look at like, damn, like I fucked up or damn, it's a rap for me or like when, when does the reality hit is the question. Um, I think when I talked to the bailiff after I got arrested. I went down there and said, I ain't really getting in trouble. So, like, I don't I go to the police station. So, this was, when you went down there for that, it was the first time you was locked up? Yeah. I got, I got arrested before for a stolen car, but it's not. No, it's just different. I just went to Broad Street, no yeah. Lane, no Rook. That juvenile stuff. Mm-hmm. So, this, this is different. So, I went over there to talk to the police, get arrested. I'm in the interrogation room. They're like, this, all right, this is what happened. I was like, yeah, pretty much. So like they already had a statement and anything. So they they don't been told what happened or anything so before was, I even got arrested. How many people were around when it happened? Can you hear about me? Five. Far. About five, five six people maybe. Yeah, because it's about four or five just at you know, the the house where I was at. <clears throat> Excuse me. But then as far as I like, know, as my case went along, going to court, like there was a couple more statements from people that was around. So. So, at what point did you know he didn't make it? Um, right after I got arrested. Mm-hmm. Right when I got arrested, he put me there, he was like, yo, you're going to get charged with murder. I'm like, all right, so I know. I know what it is now. So. What'd you feel? Did you like, did, I, I could imagine like, just hearing that, like, did your, your heart didn't sink to your, your know. stomach and like, like, what did it feel, do you, do you remember what it felt like in that moment? Nah, I don't see that. Did you feel like a victim? Nah, I don't know. I just felt like, you know, I just, oh, I just got in some shit. You know, did, I just got to be... Because when I, I didn't know the system, excuse me, I didn't know nothing. When I went in there, it was like, listen, this is all right. He did this, he did this, this is what I did. That's the bottom line. Like, I'm going to take whatever comes to it. You know, so you just going to own up to what, what you did, and you wasn't even thinking about, like, let me talk to my lawyer, because you didn't have familiarity with the system yeah, or nothing like that. That's yeah. what I'm yeah, for, so. At any point, did you, were you like, damn, I, I could be in jail for the rest of my life? Or like, I, did you, at, none of that came, to, it was just like, I did what I did, I'm going to take uh, what they come, what comes with it, but you weren't thinking about what actually comes is like, yeah, whatever happens, happens type thing? I was just like, whatever happens, happens. It started, numbers started kicking in once I started, once I, um, cause I was only in the county jail for like two weeks. Bad yeah. you down in the Meadows? Yeah, I was in the Meadows for like two weeks. And then um, after that, I went to Corrigan. Excuse me. Mm. And Corrigan had a sentence block. So at the sentence block, I met a couple of people that was already sentenced. But and you weren't sentenced yet? No, I wasn't okay. sentenced yet. So I met a couple of people. Um, one dude, from, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I think Elijah from 
from Waterbury, GQ, he had like 70. Damn. Time. So he had 70. This was like, I was like 96. So we sitting and talk, whatever. He was like, I mean, you got to, he said, take whatever, you can, take the best off you can get. So I'm like, all right. So, because he said, he already told me, I don't you know, people read shit and they come in, they see the news, whatever, and they say, hey, young man confessor. So they already know what time it is. We just, no, I'll chop it up real quick. And um, he was like, no, you're facing whatever, 25, 60. Mm. Plus you got the gun charge, whatever they else they want to tackle. So I'm like, shit, 18. I'm going to start doing numbers quick. So like, after nothing, I'm in jail like two months. I tell him, I call, I call my lawyer. I'm like, listen, I'll take 20. I'm t- I was like, I'll take 20. Mm. He was like, no, I don't know if they're going to give you that. I got to talk. And you had a paid lawyer? No, I didn't have it. I didn't have it. I had a public defender at the time. Okay. So I stayed with him, like, not for nothing. Like, no. I'm looking for, at the time, like, I said, no, my family didn't have it. No, my, no, my aunt did what she can do. But I saw at the same time, like, listen, I'm just trying to find the best offer. Find somebody to give me a good and offer. And this was, this was based on the information you was receiving while you was in there. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, you know, I'm like, I'm ready. I'm like, I, you know, it's what it is. I prepared so, to do something. So yeah. I think that's so interesting, bro. And it, and it speaks to who I know you to be now. I didn't know you then, but it, it speaks to who I know you to be now. Because it doesn't sound like at no point, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but it doesn't sound like at no point that you were, weren't aware of what you did and willing to own what you did. You know what I'm saying? Like, you were put in a situation, you did what you had to do, I'm willing to take the time that's associated with it, provided, you know, it's the best offer I can get. Like, the reason why I say that, I got a family member right now going to something similar, not as extreme, but something similar. But he's not, they're not, they're not, they're not of the street, you know what I'm saying? He just got, he got jammed up and quite frankly, doing something he had no business doing. But, uh, but what I'm finding is it's like, there's no ownership. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's no ownership. It's like he's putting a lot of that stuff back on his family and they having to figure it out where it's like, mm. and I told him, like, yo, you're going you to have to sit down. Like this is you, this charge, you're going to have to sit down. And I'm of the mind, I'm like, man, but I, I still don't feel it from him. Like, like I still feel like he, he's not owning his part. Yeah. But what I'm hearing from you is, the ownership, it sounds like it's been the foundation of... of I've always been. That's how I've always been. Like, no, do something in the house. Like, you no, know, I'm... If you can't get away with it, no, no. I, I suck it up, I felt like. No, I yeah, because it's like, you know what you're doing is wrong. And if you get caught, it's like, before you did it, you knew what the consequences were. Yeah. My thing that's crazy shit about it is like, I ain't know about the course of the... I, I, when, you know, when you get arraignment, it's like... How do you plead? You're supposed to plead guilty no matter what. I mean, not guilty no matter what of the rip. He was like, how do you plead? I was like, guilty. He was like, no, 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 not guilty. I'm like, look at that. They know I did it. They got five statements. Right. And notice, so I'm like, like, so he's like, nah, it's a whole process. I'm like, all right, whatever, no. So what kicked in, you know, when you asked me, like, when did it feel like it kicked in? Once he told me when I was like, what's the bond? They know he's like, oh, so like, where do I go? I asked my lawyer, like, where I go from now? He's like, now you go back. I was like, so when do I, you know, what's the next after that? What happens after that? He's like, well, um, you got a court date, you come back in like six months. So I'm like, so I go back to jail for six months. So mm. He's like, yeah, you just you know you got to sit there and see you can make bond, whatever. I'm like, oh, yeah, that ain't going to happen. No. What was your bond? It was a million dollars. 10%, 100,000? Shit, I don't care yeah. the difference what it was at that time. <laughs> <laughs> you just knew you wasn't coming home. Yeah, not with nothing like it. that. Yeah, and, not, and back then, a million dollar bond is crazy. Yeah, you had to show a whole bunch. And it's, like, it's like it's different. Yeah. It's just different. So you go back in there, now you're sitting down for six months. And um, what's, what's that like, man? Because like, obviously you, you got the incident that happened, you got the, the processing piece, and now you're just by yourself. Right? Well, you know, alone with your thoughts, as they say. I was in, well, how long was I in Corrigan? I went to Corrigan. I was in the Meadows for two weeks. I went to Corrigan for maybe about... Five months, not even maybe like four months. Then they shipped me to High Bond and Walker. That's what they had everybody. Like, you no, know, they had uh, like 250 or maybe half a mil or better. Mm-hmm. But at that time, that was like, it was either you had a racketeering charge or you had a body, or like you had like a serious like assault charges. Cause that's what you was getting them, serious, them, them bonds for at that time. Right. Now they throw you a bond. They, you're getting a crazy bond for drugs, like just regular shit. Right, right, right. But back then, you 
dudes getting five million dollar bonds, three million dollars, like it was crazy. So, what was? Were you nervous going in there? Cause, cause it, for the people listening to us. Javon ain't big. Like, he's not yeah, a big, I was big little dude. Shit you know what I'm saying? I was, he was I, even smaller back then. I was then. little shit when I first went to jail. When I went to jail, I was, my ID, I was five, five maybe, like a buck ten, buck fifteen oh, wow. maybe. Little, little. I was little. Yeah. I'm still though, but that's like, I was, but like, the crazy thing about when I went there, I seen a couple of people I grew up with. When I went mm. to Meadows, I see a couple older dudes that I had the racketeering case. No, I don't know. T and Jazz and everybody from Willow. So like, yeah. you know, see them, they go take care to do this, whatever. So no, they know, they know my pop, they know my whole family and everything. So I shoot the core. I see people, you see people, and it's like, you know, you just it's an instant, like, nah, we're gonna be you're gonna be straight. You know, you here, you gotta figure out how to make the best of it. So right. this is what you do, this is what we're going on, this is the schedule, this is how it is. Fall in line. So. so was that like a sense of security walking in there and just having somebody you recognize and knew? Did you feel like it, I don't know, because like he said, you spent that, you in there by yourself with your thoughts. You're like, no, actually, that, you know, homie from around the way. Over, yeah, over it just there. makes it easy. I guess, I don't, I don't know what you want to really look at it. Like, you just come back, think about it. Like, I don't know. You're just like, you're going into a, like a grocery store and you're seeing somebody that you know. And you're like, all right, we're going to be here. <laughs> so, you go to jail, together. you see somebody. You go to jail, you see somebody in the block that you know. You're like, all right, we good. Fuck with you. And, and especially like you knew, you know, you don't really know, this, know what's going on, the routine, the rec schedules and all that shit and the phones and showers and visits. So, you know, you're going to catch somebody that's in there already that's, you know, they're going to let you know what it is. And after that, you know, it's like Groundhog Day, just different food, same shit. Mm. Your rec might be in the morning or it might be in the afternoon or vice versa. And, but shit, for the most part, you're only going to, you live in two days, you live in two days out of the week. You know, you're going to get wrecked in the morning, get wrecked at night. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, your shit is going to flip flop. So you ain't got to worry about too much. Did you, double back real quick, where did you get, how did you have access to a gun like this from around, just from cash around the way? Like what made you want to get it? I don't know. It was just something. I don't know. Just I have. It wasn't that like, yo, I need a gun for this. It's just, it was just, my man's got a bunch of guns or come across something, somebody selling something. Just, just a, just have it, just have it, just. No, it ain't. You know, people just be selling shit. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. the, the, the listeners don't know, though. The nah, listeners yeah, don't know. Yeah, yeah. So we, that's why we're asking these questions that we obviously may know the answers to. Yeah, like, no, I get you. listening don't know the story. So no, right. no, people do be I don't. I don't found the gun inside the car broke into before. So, like, no, I said, I get you. Mm -hmm. So how long was you in there before you got sentenced? Um, two years. I oh, sat two years. And that was in um Walker. Walker. Yeah. Okay. So you I sat went to trial like in March. So you sat okay, so you sat for two years. And what was the final sentence? Thirty. Thirty. Straight flat thirty. And well what, not 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 flat thirty. I just my sentence was thirty years. Okay. I didn't get like a mandatory sentence. What did that feel like when you heard that in the courtroom? Um, because I went to trial, so um Which is crazy too for a second, just for one second. Like you you admit it in so many instances, like on, in the interrogation that you yeah. did it, and your lawyer advised you to plead not guilty, so you took it to trial. And you took it to trial. Well, actually, why did you take it to trial? That was just arraignment. The arraignment dude just said plead not guilty. You have to do that. That's just that's procedure. They don't care. Mm -hmm. They just plead not guilty. They don't care if they got you on camera. Like and just, just that's just a procedure of arraignment. Yep. But as I went along later on, I got I ended up getting a different. I ended up getting a special public defender. And he was trying to get me to plead guilty. I mean, just take... He what was the first offer? 36 with the right to argue for less. Basically, he's like, oh, I could get you like 33, 30 years. Or I'm like, nah, I'm not. I'm not. For manslaughter. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, nah, I'm not doing that. I'm not taking that. No, honestly, I don't think he said manslaughter. I think it was he wanted me to take it for the murder charge. It wasn't manslaughter. He didn't offer manslaughter. Um, it was like, I was like, nah, I'm not taking that. I was like, I take... A dub for manslaughter. I said, I'm not, I'll take a manslaughter charge. I'm not taking no murder charge. I'll, I'll go to trial. I, no, I, I lose. How did, you, how, did you, how did you in your mind come to, I'll take a dub? Where'd that number come from? I was 18 years old. I'm like, I'm looking at where everybody else is getting. You know, I got manslaughter charge. I faced between 5 to 40. I'm looking at all the other cases that kind of like favorite, like similar to mine and stuff like that. So this, of the charges. So Is this I'm the like, cast that you're currently locked up with? 
that you're learning no, about? No, it's just not nah, them two, but a lot of the people have already been sentenced. It's like a thing that's called the spirits and sentences. So it's like, you know, they, they could compare everybody that had manslaughter with firearm charges within the time that I got arrested to the time I got sentenced, they'll show all their sentences. So they'll it was like the, me, the median, yep. yeah, the median so was like 20. I see that stuff, I'm like, all right, and I know, you know I'm young, I'm like, all right, I got two and I do this. You no, know, I, I did wrong, you know. It is, I, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm okay with this right here. Okay. It ain't really what it up to me, but shit, if I'm, at that time, I was willing to do like straight 20. I take 20, that's my mindset. I take 20 years, I go home when I'm 40. Mm. You no, know, so. I don't know, so I was like, that's it, man. So, 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 so right. you got sentenced, they say 30 years. Yeah. How'd that feel? I kind of figured it. Because like I said, I got found not guilty of murder, then they found me guilty of manslaughter of firearm because I had like a lesser included offense. I was trying to, because they trying to get, say murder, murder. I'm like, nah, it's not that. Right. I'm not copping. That's why I said how I'm going to trial. Because murder is premeditated, right? Yeah. And I said, if they cop out to the 30, that they, the 30, 35 that they want to give me, I'm going to damn near walk that 30 to the door. Mm. As far as with the manslaughter at the time, um, parole, you stay away, you're still able to make parole at 50% for manslaughter. Got it. So that's why I'm like, all right, I'll take the dub. If they don't sh- they shoot me down at 10, I'll probably do 15. You know, that's what my mind state. You know, even if I were, if I do the whole dub, it's still, you know, it is what it is. Because um, I see everybody. I got 70, 50, 60. So, it's so like, comparatively, a dub ain't nothing. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. 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 So it's like, when people tell me that, listen, that's what you need to do, take it. I'm like, ah, yeah. Then it's like, nigga, smoke my, smoke my boots. Right. Like, ah, yeah, I am straight. Yeah, it's funny, man, because I remember the, some people you mentioned. Um, I remember during that time, the 90s was wild, man. And I remember some of the OGs in the neighborhood, and I don't remember the names of people who got sentenced or whatnot, but I remember that's when I learned the term football numbers. That's when <laughs> I learned the term football numbers. And, Jerseys. Uh, yeah. And I'm just like, football numbers? And it's like, yeah, he got 70 years. And I'm like, 70 years? You know, yeah. like I'm, I'm a kid, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I just can't fathom that. But there was a lot of people that was in the street that, and I don't know if it was how bad things were in the country, in the city, in the state, I'm not sure, but it felt like people were doing things and getting these absorbent numbers. Like, like how did you even come up with that? You know what I'm saying? I think because it be, like at one point in the 90s, it was like solids, kings, yeah. nietas. A lot of, dubs, a lot of gangs. A lot of gangs. gangs. A lot of gangs. So it was like, and it's so small as it is, like Hartford, especially like in Hartford area, we were Hartford, New Britain, mm-hmm. and that same little, and Hartford had all the, they was acting up in the 90s. So yeah. it was like... I remember, so they, I was, remember uh, you may or may not remember this, 60 Minutes did a special on Stowe Village. Like it was, uh, I believe it was Lion Kings and South. Mm-hmm. I can't remember. I, but they was they driving around with them. At, at one point, um, they had a shootout the police on Park Street. It was like, it was crazy. So I think, I think it became so normal because the court system kept seeing so many people come to jail for shootings. Yeah. Like because of the gangs. I'm saying so it was like... This, there's a bunch of like when I went to when I was in Walker and High Bond, there's 25, 50, 96, about 96 people in that block. No lie, probably at least like 70 of them had bodies. Mm. Easy 70 people. And some multiple, three, two, five. Like, so like So how like like we're gonna get into like prison life in a second, but like you literally surrounded by killers. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And you went in for the same thing, right? But you were surrounded by killers. How, like, That's different. How man. do you rest? Like, how, 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 do, how are you... You know what I'm saying? Because I'm like... I'm, a, I'm aware always, right? Like, I'm mm-hmm. facing the door for a reason. Like, I'm always no. aware. But I, when you around people that this is what they're known for, you know what I'm saying? Regardless of what they're known for, this is what they're in there for. And it's like... You know, if you get... well. My assumption is if you get into something, it can go all the way. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because these people have exhibited that they're not, they're not afraid to let it get out of hand. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So however it goes, however it go. So how does that feel? Like when you know when like, yo, I mean, I'm around people that's did, that done the same thing, some of them at a higher level, you know, than, than I have. And not that higher level, like yeah. I'm, I'm nah, glamorizing I'm it, but I'm just saying multiple to bodies extreme. and stuff like that to the extreme. Right, that's a better word. So... How did that, like, how did that, like, were you able, were you comfortable? Were you not comfortable? No, nah, I think we good. I think everybody comfortable. Now, for another, I don't think when we, everybody, somebody that went in there for whatever they was in there for, especially if you're going to high bond, you were prepared. 
Because you know you got your case. You know you in there for a minute. It's just... I don't know. It's just... You're not really feeling no type of way about nobody else. Mm -hmm. Because then they, you know... You ain't do nothing wrong to that person. Right. And so you ain't you ain't got that, you ain't caused no reason for that man to act up or the next It's more so you coming in, all right, I'm around a whole bunch of men. I know how I am. And somebody gonna be ten times worse, or somebody that's like they ain't even got all they ain't even got it all. So especially like I said, once you first come in, you know these people are mad, these people they ain't got it all. You know, this is like it, it's different. So it's just like more so it's like a camp. It's like mm. boy being in the boys and girls club without you when you can't leave. Camp Shady. It's like being in the boys and girls <laughs> club and you can't leave mm. when you're younger, as far as shit like that. So you're gonna get a you're gonna uh, get accustomed to who's who and the mannerisms and who you know, you know if you play ball, you can deal with a couple of people that play ball. You play cards, you know, certain shit like that. But yes, I think I think what happens is most people's perspective of prison is all the shit that they. They glamorize TV. on TV. Yeah, that's you know what I'm saying? So it's like it's cutthroat from the time you're in it to the time you leave. Yeah, that's, that's what people, bullshit, people envision it to be like. Nah. You know what I'm saying? So so how was that? Because your mom was pregnant, you said, with, yeah. your, with your little sister, you said? Yeah, she had baby. She had my, my, my sister um, three days after I got arrested. I got arrested June 26th. Oh, so she was 96. pregnant. She pregnant, pregnant. Yeah, pregnant. like it I could pushed, be any I day. That, I'm, me being locked probably pushed that out a little earlier than what expected. I never asked her when she was actually due date. Mm. But yeah, I know. I think my, me going so you, getting locked up, I definitely pushed my right little sister. Right after it happened, you said you went home and told her what happened. Yeah, yeah like, after I gotta that, go. yeah. Mouth. Three days later, my little sister there. Yeah. So damn, bro, that was the last time they they saw you outside of a jail. Yeah. Right when you went to the house. Cool. Yeah, Your my mom. mom. Yeah. 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 So, so what was? <clears> how long <throat> did you end up? How long did you end up staying in prison? Sixteen years, three months, and five days. So I remember when you first came home. And I, I asked that you 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 said every day, you know what I'm saying? Like every day. How so that that's a long time, bro. That's a long time. How how was what type of toll did that take on the your family? Um Could, before no, you, you gotta ask them that. Before you Honestly, answer that, I what, I, what I'll say is New Britain did a good job of keeping your name alive. You know what I'm saying? Like I appreciate it, New Britain did a good job of that and um because, again, I didn't know you at the time. You know what I'm saying? And shit, I didn't even know that Oz was your cousin, to keep yeah. it real, until, like, later on. Um, they was young, too, though. So, yeah. like, for a minute, I said, we had to lie to my, my younger cousin that was, like, his big brother to my angel mm. that I was in college for a couple of years. <laughs> so my dad told my, yeah. my daughter he was in college. <laughs> like, yeah, know. now they, had to, they, they gave him that for a few, and after that, he started getting older, and he was like, all right, we can't, we, like, you know, you get smarter. You get, like, nine, ten, you're like... We could go see people at school. That's what I think it was for a minute. I, I think for me, again, I'm, I'm speaking from my perspective in terms of how you were perceived for me. It yeah. was um, it was like, and again, I didn't know the story until right now, but the perception was you stood up to the bully. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm sure your stature has something to do with that. I was going to ask you know, that. Like, yeah, like how big you were. And I don't know how big this person was, but, yeah. you know, that's that was a story, and and it was almost like, oh, he 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 stood up for himself, you know what I mean? And and you were always a stand up dude, like you didn't, you weren't no. To a degree, for, it was like you know what I'm saying, just standing up in the sense of like, you no, know, relax, like this ain't the whole transaction, the whole everything how it transpired. Like I said, no, I'm in the streets, but it wasn't like you no, know, he just coming like, oh, give me your shit, whatever. Like nah, somebody come through. We know that he won't buy son. Hey, you take this, go take care of what you got to take. I'll look out for you when you get back, whatever the case may be. But, you know, me being who I am, laid back, not really caring about too much, and him knowing that, all right, I'm going to keep this. Mm -hmm. like, and exactly what happened, like, you know I'm not going to go too crazy about it. You got what you wanted, and now you're mad at me that I'm not mad at you. Right. So that, that's how, that's basically what it boiled down to, that shit like that. Then it just transpired to, you know, you... You want to put your hands on people? And shit. So let me, I'm going to back up just a second. Did, then, did, then we going to get into. Hold on. Did, 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 like, <clears throat> did niggas try you because of your size? Or was it, was you think nah. it, was, it was just like. I think so. I think for, well, that and for like me coming to my Pleasant, I'm, uh, I'm a pinnacle. My family from pinnacle and stuff like that. So, and then uh, I'm, you know, I'm quiet, laid back and I'm, who's him? Who's the new, who's the new kid in the project? Whatever, stuff like that. So a couple people like me. You know, you get you get hated because people like you. So, mm -hmm. but um, 
No, nah, I just got certain shit. You know, people talk shit. Man. Ain't nobody. I ain't really never. Got, I ain't getting too many fights, and I, I just kept it. You know, keep it cool with a few people, and that's about it. So you, you, um, while you were in there, you transferred a number of times in prison, right? Yeah, yeah, I went to a few places. So now, where, where you, you were in Virginia at one point. Yeah, I went to VA in 01, 2001. Okay. I got sentenced in 98, like in May or June, somewhere around there. So, but in 01, July. you was you was locked up for five years at that point, right? Yeah. Roughly? What yeah. day What day did you get out? October 1st, 2012. So, how, so what was that like, transferring to another state? Because now you're not walking in knowing anybody. Nah, we are. Because I'm going through, I'm going on there with a bunch of people from Connecticut. Oh, that's how that works. Connecticut, Connecticut had a contract with Virginia to transfer 500 inmates. Connecticut basically paid for 500 beds or however it worked. I think, what was it, Matt? How do you know how that works? Yeah, I think they just, they had the space. Connecticut jail was overpopulated. They set up some type of contract and swapped out, yeah. shipped out. Yeah, that's what it was. They they shipped like five hundred. They they got like oh, so this was bed. like a whole thing. Like yeah, it was like, understood. Like, yeah, it was a whole state movement and stuff. Ah, okay. Into, you know, to over, like I said, the overpopulation. So. And you stayed in Virginia till when? Oh, four, three years. And came back up. Yeah. Okay. Back, so you so. only went to Virginia and you came back up. Don't no, before that. I, I nah, before that. I, I was in from from High Bond when I got sentenced. I went to Cheshire for like two years. Cheshire was on some bullshit. They didn't want to give my contact visits. I acted up, had my mom call it, people, whatever, threatened to call them with the papers, anything. They kept me up out of jail ASAP. So they sent me to McDougal. So that's when, from McDougal, I was there probably for like only like two years. Then they were doing the whole transfer shit. Oh, and that's when you went down there. The but the, only, the two states were Connecticut and Virginia. Yeah. They, okay. Well, okay. From Connecticut. People, but when we went to Connecticut, we had a whole, from Virginia, we had like a whole couple, like a couple pods. So there's you no, know, there's a good amount. We all stay with Connecticut. When we went oh, outside okay. the rec yard, we was wrecking with you no know, Virginia, DC dudes. Um, I don't know. No, I think that was just the, um, when I went there, just Virginia and I think Vermont. Like, oh, so we was Vermont all on the same side of the compound. Too. Gotcha. And in Connecticut. Next time on All Black Money Therapy. So you were a productive member of society in 2012 for eight years. <laughs> Bring me up to. Uh, May 12th, May, May 12th, 2020. Headline, May 13th, 2020. 37 pounds of marijuana found during a traffic stop in Berlin. 